Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Usually we do a pickup of a new vehicle at the dealership but unfortunately circumstances were such that we couldn't do that. So we have the Supra back at our unit and we're going to go over it like we would do at the dealership. Now we've been waiting for this car for quite a while. We ordered it back in January and if you've been following the channel we have been giving you small updates about what Toyota have been sending us. So they sent us some gifts like um, the branded Alexa, uh, they also invited us to a track day where we were able to drive this car on the track and on the road and I did say I was actually pretty impressed with the car. We did have the Z4 for a while and although they are based on the same platform and it's essentially the same car, this does drive very differently to that model. I've only done 200 miles in this and most of that has been uh, driving to log the car and develop our stage one tuning. So what I'll do is give my driving impressions in a video later down the line. Today, we're gonna have a look at the car, go over some of the design features, and then Hash will start taking it apart because it is a development car. Uh, so we can look at what we're going to do with the Eventuri intake. So just looking at the car in general, I really like the design. It's got some really interesting design cues. I love the sh way the lines shape over here around the headlight. It's very kind of McLaren-esque. When you look at the car, you don't know where to place it. It's definitely got Japanese flair, but it looks very different to everything that's on the road. I've been driving this around for the last, I would say, week, and it gets really positive reactions from everyone. Obviously, no one's really seen one of these on the road. We picked it up on Saturday and I haven't seen another one on the road and bearing in mind there's only going to be 300 of them uh, up until the end of the year it is going to be a rare sight on UK roads. Um, if you've been following the channel you would have realized we did go for the red color and I'm really happy with that decision it does look really good and it kind of goes with the company colors of the red V on Eventuri. We are going to have the car wrapped in a very similar wrap to the RS3 which is sitting behind me uh, so they look um, very similar in design. Both of these cars will be built and on show at Essen Motor Show in December. So if any of you guys are visiting, you'll be able to take a closer look at it. Our, our, what are our plans for this car? Well, a lot. We're going to make a full aero kit for the car under our new brand, Evero. We're gonna have some 660 design wheels, obviously gonna design the Eventuri intake and also do um, evolve tuning on the car. So start with stage one, then go stage two, and then most likely hybrid turbo and see how far we can push the car. If we come over to the side of the car, it has a lot of vents. There's lots of rumors around saying that these vents are functional. They're not functional at all. We've had a quick look. It's got vents here. You can probably pull them out, but underneath there is no hole there. So if you want these vents to be functional, you have to cut the bonnet underneath. Now we will do that, that's not a problem for us, but I don't think most people are going to want to cut a brand new car up. The wheels, I'm not usually a fan of OEM wheels on a lot of cars, but I think these actually look pretty good. Maybe I wouldn't have gone for the two-tone colors on the wheel and maybe would have left it one color, maybe black, but the actual design and the concave is very good. The Michelin Supersport tires on these cars are apparently a special compound designed for the Supra and they're very grippy. When I went on the te test drive, um, it was in summer and on the road, I couldn't unstick the car. I literally did not want to lose traction. So very sticky tires and I would say they're as sticky as PS4S. Um, so definitely they're not a normal Supersport tire. The brakes on this car are actually very, very good. Uh, very large discs on the front, uh, multi-pot caliper, and they inspire a lot of confidence even on the track. I did briefly mention the suspension on this car and how I said it handled and rode differently to the Z4. The Z4 I found was very skittish on B roads. This is very compliant and it's very sure-footed on the road and inspires a lot of confidence. So Toyota have definitely done something different with the suspension on this car, whether it's the electronic damper settings, the spring rates, or whether it's the fact that it's got a stiffer chassis with a hard top, I'm not sure, but as we own the car for a longer period of time, I'll be able to investigate that further. Just while I'm still at the front of the car, when I was looking at designing the front spoiler for this, I, I didn't know that this part of the splitter was actually recessed into the bumper. So that's gonna really limit the design. I was hoping to make a clean design that would just come around here. But unless you smooth that part of the bumper out, you're only going to be able to make a design that actually does go up 
into that recess. So I'm not sure how many people are going to want to smooth the bumper out because that's an additional cost. The front of the car, you'll notice there's no number plate, but there's holes. We did ask the dealer multiple times not to drill holes in the front bumper, but they have done that. Maybe it's because they know the IATs are not so great on this car, so they're trying to get extra ventilation in here. So I have been road logging this and the IATs are not very good on this car, so it definitely needs some kind of cooling upgrade, whether that's an upgraded external rad um, or some methanol injection. The actual charge cooler on this car is built into the inlet manifold, so that's going to be very, very difficult to upgrade. The other feature I really love on this car is a double bubble roof, and I'm hoping that we can make this in carbon fiber because I think it'll look absolutely fantastic. It really adds a lot of personality to the car. Moving to the rear of the car, it gets even more interesting. I like the front end, but I think the rear end is even better looking and very aggressive. The amount of lines and curves it has is just really remarkable and for it to work in a cohesive way. The rear diffuser, as I mentioned in my previous videos, very, very aggressive and looks aftermarket. I love the way they've integrated the reverse light into here to mimic race cars when they have the brake lights or rain lights at the back. Exhaust also, normally on OEM cars, normally quite small and you want to change them straight away. They're actually very acceptable. The noise on the car is not bad considering this car has a GPF, but I'm sure that we will make it louder at some point. For the back of the car, the diffuser will be, I guess, very similar to this because we're still going to have to integrate the reverse light. Uh, but maybe make it slightly more aggressive. And I'm thinking for the rear of the car, maybe two different versions. So like a lip spoiler in carbon along the top here, and then maybe an old super style wing that's slightly bigger. Now, Tio have said that they have reinforced this part of the car to be able to take a wing, but I'm not sure. We'll have to see when we start taking it apart. The boot's actually quite useful as well um, for anyone that's interested. It probably can hold a set of golf clubs. So just before we take a look inside the car, I'll just mention about the door and this area here. I really like the design of this. It looks very much like, uh, it reminds me of an aeroplane almost, like a fighter jet. Um, it does limit the viewing out of the windows, but not too much. The other thing is it's got vent here which is also fake because even if you remove that it's got nowhere to go here and even if it did it's got nowhere to go on this side for example you'd have that on a rear engine car to cool something at the back of the car or it'd be used to cool the brakes at the rear also these wing mirrors are absolutely massive so when you're coming to a junction they do actually block quite a, a large proportion of the view i'm not sure they actually needed to be that big Moving inside the car, it's uh, very familiar to me because it is very, very BMW-esque. Um, even the key is very similar, if not the same. And they did give us a very nice key ring. So props for that. But yeah, in terms of the cabin, this, the iDrive system is exactly the same. The switch gear is exactly the same. The gear stick is exactly the same. These controls on the steering wheel are exactly the same. The dash is very different. I would say that's very Japanese style, the way the fuel and the temperature works there. I'm pretty sure um, an S2000 was quite similar there, but it's very driver focused. So it has the gauges in the middle so you can keep an eye on what's going on. It shows the revs going around the outside and it'll display the MPH in the middle. The sound system, so this is the pro version. So the sound system is JBL. So it's got the tweeters and mids here and it's got two subwoofers behind the seats. And it's got something a bit weird, which I never noticed when we test drove the car is that it doesn't actually have anything separating the cabin from the boot. So if you have things in the boot and you drive around, you can kind of hear them rolling around, which is a bit strange. I'm not sure why they've actually done that. It's a very functional cabin, but it's comfortable and it works. Everything's kind of where you want it. The one other difference I've noticed between this and BMWs is that BMWs normally have switch gear for the lights, but this has buttons instead. But I like the way the vents are kind of integrated into the dash and it feels pretty good quality to be fair. It's um, 
very similar to the Z4, but it's it's styled slightly differently and um, I like it. I mean, everything kind of feels like it's high quality. It works as it should do. Um, it's got a carbon piece in the middle here and nowhere else. Um, they could have maybe put some carbon on this piece here as well, rather than it being gloss black, but that's just me being a little bit fussy. Moving on to the engine bay, it is a very familiar power plant. This is a B58, but it's a technical update version you would find also in the Z4. It's actually a very good engine and it's probably one of the most reliable ones we've seen from BMW in terms of tuning. We have already stage one tuned this car and we will release the figures when we've done a bit more testing. The bit that's gonna interest even Chewy is obviously the airbox. We did buy the Z4 to accelerate our development on the Supra and we're very close to actually finishing the kit. So follow the channel and we'll reveal more details about that intake and what we're going to do in terms of providing this car with a bit more power from the intake and a bit more sound. What we have discovered is there's absolutely no cold air feed coming in from anywhere. The, the intake essentially just gets some air from around the headlight. There's no holes, there's no feed coming to the front of the car. So we're gonna have a look at this vent, see if there's anything behind there and see if there's any way we can get a bit more cold air into the car. Uh, during my logging, I have found that the IATs are actually pretty high on this car, higher than I'm used to seeing on uh, the Z4s and the M140Is possibly or I, I think mainly because it only has this opening at the front so even though if the charge cooler is the same size the BMWs would normally have the kidney grill here which is open so the contact patch for the air going to the external rad and cooling it would be a lot more effective. So overall I'm quite happy with this car so far I will give further driving impressions um, the more I drive the car but now what we're going to do is let a hash get the car on the ramp and start taking it apart. It is a development car. We need to see what's going on behind this bumper to see if we can get cold air and feed to that intake. With the car now on the lift, we can have a quick look underneath. As you can see, like most modern cars, it has got a lot of under trays. The suspension setup is essentially a BMW, so it's very familiar to us, as are the brakes as well. On the exhaust, you can see the OPF and the CAT are a one-piece downpipe, which simply connect with one clamp to the rest of the one-piece exhaust. The rear axle is very similar to an M140i, but the diff is very different. On the M140s you have an open diff, on this you've got an electronic LSD very similar to the M cars. Right at the back you've got a pretty big back box, you have got a valve control on there. When you do want to change your back box you will have to cut your stock system to have an aftermarket back box connected. Now I've had a brief look underneath, we're going to start taking it apart. Thank you so much for watching guys if you'd like to watch more of this project you can do so over here if you'd like to watch what youtube suggests you might like from our other videos you can watch that over here if you like this video please click on the thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe to our channel if you guys have any questions please drop them in the comment section and we'll do our best to answer them for you